What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my review of the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2023. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the Moto G Stylus 2023 is one of the latest budget phones from Motorola. And this phone is the successor to last year's G Stylus 2022. Now, despite this phone being very affordable with an MSRP of just $199 for the factory unlocked model, you're still getting a lot here for the money. So this phone is packed full of value. Now, I will be leaving some links in the video description for your convenience to where you can get this phone factory unlocked, but you also might want to consider getting it through a carrier because typically carriers offer some really generous discounts in exchange for getting the phone through them. Now, the only catch with that is you'll be stuck with using the phone with that carrier, but most people don't tend to switch carriers that often. But before I get too far into things here with the Moto G Stylus 2023, let's see what all comes included in the box. So here's the box the phone does come in, and this is plastic free packaging, which is pretty cool. Now, in addition to the phone itself, we are getting a SIM card removal tool included. We're also getting some literature here, such as this quick start guide. And then we're also getting a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer. But unfortunately, there is no USB wall adapter included in the box. Now, with this device, we're getting a very large 6.5 inch display. Now, the display itself looks really good. I'm really impressed with the colors of it, especially considering that this is a lower end phone. I feel like everything looks very bright and crisp and clear. Now, it is an iPad. IPS LCD display and it does feature a 90 hertz refresh rate so everything runs very smoothly here and overall this phone looks and feels a lot more expensive than it even is now the only downside with this display is that it is only 720p it certainly would have been nice to get a 1080p display but as I mentioned earlier on in the video this phone is very affordable so it's really not surprising that they did have to cut some corners in some places but on the other hand if someone had told me that this phone has a 1080p display I probably would believe them because the display just doesn't look like it's 720p things are very clear as you can see so the overall usability of the phone certainly is not hindered in any way with this display being 720p now the PPI with this phone is 270 we're getting a 20 by 9 aspect ratio so a more narrow but taller form factor and we're getting an 84.5% screen to body ratio. Now overall, we have very small bezels here with the device, but the bottom bezel is slightly thicker. Now I am impressed though that we do have a hole punch for the front facing camera as that does make the front camera not too noticeable. So having a phone with such a large, great looking display like this one really makes it ideal for watching video content, going on social media, looking at photos, reading eBooks, all those various things will be great on this massive canvas. Now the front facing camera with this device is eight megapixels and stay tuned for later on in this video as I'll be showing you a variety of different photo and video samples from all the various cameras on this phone. Now internally, with this device, we're getting 64 gigabytes of storage along with micro SD card expansion. Now, overall, I would say that 64 gigs in 2023 is pretty much the bare minimum, especially since nowadays the operating systems on these phones take up a lot of that storage. So I am glad that there is 64 gigs, but if this phone happened to have 32 gigs instead, that certainly would not be enough. So overall, they kind of gave the phone the bare minimum as far as storage goes. But again, for this being an affordable phone, I'm not necessarily too surprised, and I'm also not disappointed. Now thankfully, this device also features micro SD card expansion, so you can always add in an SD card to offload photos and videos to free up some of that internal space. Now with this device, there is no wireless charging, which is a bit unfortunate. Wireless charging is a feature that I do find myself using quite a bit with any phone that does support it, but similar to the 720p display and the 64 gigs of storage, I'm not surprised for a phone in this segment to not have have wireless charging. So overall, it's not a huge deal. Now this phone does feature a fingerprint sensor on the power button, and I'm a big fan of the placement of it and also how accurate it is. So let's give that a try right now. And you can see very quick. Let's try that one more time. So very fast and accurate and responsive, which is excellent. And in addition to the fingerprint sensor, this phone also features face unlock. So I do appreciate that we have multiple methods for getting into the phone. Now on the back side of the device, you can see here we have the camera module and we are getting a dual camera setup. So there's a 50 megapixel main camera and a two megapixel macro camera for close up images. And portrait mode is supported with both the rear and front cameras. So if you are a fan of that feature, then just know that it's here and it does work really well. Now video recording with this device does max out at 1080p with both the front and rear cameras. So unfortunately, no 4K video recording 
recording with this phone, but again, since this is a lower end device, I'm at least grateful that we are getting 1080p. Now here's how things look on the camera app. This is with the main rear camera right now. Then from here, we can switch over to the macro camera to get very close up and get things in really good detail. So that feature is useful in certain situations, but I'm especially glad that the main camera with this phone is very good. Now keep in mind though, by default, it doesn't actually capture images in the full 50 megapixels. To do that, you're gonna to wanna to go down here and go over to the More tab and access the 50 megapixel ultra res mode. Then by doing that, you can take photos in the maximum quality. Now the reason why 50 megapixels is not the default photo taking mode is because photos taken in that megapixel count will take up a lot more storage space on the device itself, and for many people, it's not totally necessary. So just know that that feature is there if you wanna use it, but it's not enabled by default. But on the other hand, that does make a lot of sense. We can also go to portrait mode to get those nice blurred out backgrounds that I know that many people are a big fan of. We can even go here to adjust the amount of blur. So you can do less blur or more blur, depending on your preference. And then we can flip around to the front facing camera to take selfies. So there's me right there. You can also adjust the blur for portrait mode with the front facing camera as well. And in addition to that, you can take standard selfies too if you don't want that portrait mode effect. So overall, for a very affordable smartphone, I am impressed with the cameras that we're getting here. Now take a look at some camera samples. I'll let the results speak for themselves because you can see them right in front of you. But overall, I'm very happy with the image quality in both photo and video mode. Now in a second, you'll see some video samples, but for the time being, definitely take a look at these photo samples. Now I'm impressed with the colors. I feel like everything is very vibrant. And also in situations where there's a lot of contrast between areas that are more in the shadows versus areas that are more bright Right? It does a nice job at balancing those out. Now through the viewfinder, things initially didn't look that great, but after capturing the photos and then allowing the phone to process those photos, the results are very impressive. So you could easily use the cameras in this phone for pretty much any situation. Even if you are taking photos on a vacation or family memories, it'll be great for that. So just know that if you have any hesitation related to the cameras here on the Moto G Stylus 2023, you certainly shouldn't be concerned at all. Now, the only downside really is that there's no ultra wide angle camera. So I do wish it had that, but for the cameras that we are getting here, the quality is really good. But let's now take a look at some video samples from the Moto G Stylus 2023. And here is a 1080p from facing test video from the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2023. Really curious to know what you think about the video and audio quality. And here's a macro video from the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2023. So you can get very close up here and take video in really good detail. So a pretty interesting feature overall. And here is a 1080p test video using the main rear camera with the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2023. We do have very fast autofocus in video mode, which is great. Now with this device, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM paired up with a MediaTek Helio G85 processor. Now overall, you shouldn't expect this device to necessarily be the fastest out there. Honestly, there are certain situations where it can get a bit laggy, even with general usage. So if you wanna do more demanding tasks, such as high performance gaming or even video editing, I think you will be a bit frustrated with this phone not necessarily being that fast. But on the other hand, for a phone that's very affordable and for a phone that's meant for maybe smartphone users that aren't looking for the most advanced features or even for the phone to be that fast as it is, I feel like this phone is adequate. So I think most people will be happy with it. And thankfully as well, there is Android 13 on here and it's very well optimized. Motorola does a great job with their software. So the phone runs very bug free. It's just that, like I said, in certain situations, the phone does tend to kind of slow down a bit. But beyond that, really the biggest limitation with the processor in this phone is that it doesn't support 5G connectivity. Now this phone's not advertised to work on 5G, so that does make sense. 
And a little bit later on in this year, I'm expecting that they'll launch the Moto G Stylus 5G 2023, which will be a pretty much more premium version of this device with 5G support. But if you're assuming at this point that every smartphone out there supports 5G, just know that's not the case, as this one does not. Now, is that a deal breaker? It really comes down to your personal preference. I feel like people can certainly get by with just 4G LTE in 2023, but at the same time, if you're gonna go through all the time and effort of getting a brand new smartphone, you may as well get one that does support your carrier's latest and greatest network. So certainly something worth considering there. Now with this device, we're getting a very large 5,000 milliamp hour internal battery. So definitely expect to get a full day, if not multiple days of usage out of this phone on a single charge, which is certainly a great thing. Now with this phone, unfortunately there is no NFC. So that's actually a pretty big deal and something that I am very disappointed with. And in fact, many of the new G series phones from Motorola this year also do not have NFC. Now, if you're not familiar with NFC, basically that's the technology that's used for tap and pay to make mobile contactless payments. So if you wanna use services such as Google Pay to make payments with your device, when you are at a grocery store, for example, or really anywhere with a tap and pay payment terminal, you cannot use this phone for that. So that is pretty disappointing. That's also a feature that I personally tend to use quite a bit with any phone that does support it. On a more positive note though, this device does feature stereo audio. So you're getting audio out of both the main speaker in the bottom and then also the earpiece when watching video content or listening to music. Now, typically with lower end phones, you only get audio coming out of the main speaker and not the earpiece. That's only for phone calls with other devices. But with this phone, that's not the case as you're getting very immersive audio here. However, at this point in 2023, you actually can't find that many smartphones that even have a headphone jack anymore. Now, so despite this device only having a 720p display, it is excellent for watching videos. And the reasons for that is because the display itself has great colors, but beyond that, the speakers really do get very loud here. This phone probably has some of the best speakers for the price, so that's very impressive. So certainly with the Moto G Stylish 2023, you need to sit back, relax, and watch videos or go on social media and just kind of chill out. Now the signature feature of this device, hence the name of it, is the stylus, and that's built in on the bottom of the phone. Now one thing I especially appreciate about the stylus is, if you don't find yourself using it too much, there's really no downside with having it. It's not like it makes the phone thicker than other phones out there, and it's not like it really adds too much to the price either. This phone is already very affordable, so pretty much there's no downsides with the stylus, it's only a nice thing to have. And overall, I don't find it to be a gimmick. Nowadays, there's a lot of situations where you have to sign digitally and having the ability to just take the stylus out and sign right on your screen can really come in handy. But beyond that, you can just pop out the stylus just like this. Then from there, you get this pop-up sidebar with a bunch of different apps. And of course, you can go into the Play Store to access even more stylus optimized applications. But then from here, you can go to create a new note. You can then do a drawing. So there we go or you can say, hello. So I really find this stylus to be impressive. Of course, compared to the S23 Ultra from Samsung, for example, one of the more top of the line phones out there, this stylus is nowhere near as capable, but for a phone that's as affordable as this one, we're really getting a great stylus experience. And overall, it is very responsive. Now I found the hardware of this phone to be very impressive despite it being very affordable. Now typically you'd expect for a lower end phone that it would feel cheap, but that's not the case here with the G Stylus 2023. Now the phone is made completely of plastic besides the display which is glass, but that's really not an issue here because Motorola did a great job with the materials that we're getting. So I'm a big fan of this kind of frosted back on the phone. I really like that it doesn't pick up any fingerprints at all. So it's a very stylish device. But on the left side of the phone, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then on the right side, we have volume up, volume down, and the power button, which doubles as the fingerprint sensor. Then up top here, we have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom of the phone, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, microphone, and speaker and then also the stylus. And then on the back of the phone, we have the camera module, flash, and Motorola logo. But in conclusion, I'm a big fan of the Moto G Stylus 2023. This phone is an excellent value for the price, and I certainly recommend it for anyone that's not looking to spend too much, but still wants a high quality smartphone. While there are some downsides with this phone, such as not having NFC, it makes up for it by having the stylus, stereo audio, having great cameras, and also an impressive display. So overall, I do think this phone is worth considering. But if you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. This is Kevin here with my review of the Moto G Stylus 2023, and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.